deep sea cables like these carry 99% of the world's digital communications. From your Zoom calls and YouTube videos, to banking transactions and military communications. Here's a rare look at a Chinese company laying such fibre optic cables in the Maldives. It's tough work to lay there manually, but it takes Heng Tong Marine just 32 days to link all six major islands with 1,155 kilometres of cable. Submarine cables like these now crisscross the world, linking countries in an information superhighway. And historically, a country that controls a communications network has the strategic edge. You have to go back to the sort of late 1800s when Britain was the world's dominant supplier of telegraph cables. During World War I, the British literally cut off Germany's communications with the world by cutting through its undersea telegraph cables. Today, things are a bit different. There is no one dominant player. Until recently, just a handful of companies, Corning, Sumitomo Electric and Prismian Group had the know-how to manufacture these cables. But now... So about 10% of the world's subsea cables have involved a Chinese supplier. And that's, you know, 10% sounds like maybe that's not that much, but that's up from essentially zero a little over a decade ago. Those are just the building blocks of the undersea superhighway. Who actually owns and operates the hundreds of cables that carry our data? They're typically international consortia and private or state-owned companies. It's no surprise that many of them have a vested interest in ensuring that people everywhere can access huge volumes of data at high speed. Tech giants like Google, Microsoft, Meta and Amazon own or lease nearly half the world's undersea bandwidth. But China in recent years has emerged as a major player. Three state-owned Chinese telcos, China Mobile, China Telecom and China Unicom have ownership sticks in dozens of cables, including here in Southeast Asia. More on them later. With so much of the world depending on submarine cables, security is a big concern. Some fear that Russian submarine cables could sever cables in the event of a conflict, just like Britain did to Germany a century ago. The UK's most senior military officer in 2017 warned that such an act by Russia would immediately and potentially catastrophically affect both our media and economy, as well as other ways of living. Of course, most actual cable damage so far has been due to accidents, natural disasters and even sharks. But others fear that the cables could be used for espionage and cyber warfare. Western intelligence agencies have been known to tap these cables. And now, they worry that China will do the same, siphon data through cables laid or serviced by Chinese companies. Take the Peace Cable project as an example. Spanning 15,000 kilometers, it connects Asia, Europe and Africa. It's also built by Heng Tong, whose third largest shareholder is Huawei, the Chinese telco giant. In 2020, one US security report warned that the peace cable connections could be useful for the PRC government. Then there's the Solomon Islands. In 2017, it signed a contract with Huawei for a cable project that would connect it to Australia. But then Australia offered $100 million to finance the project instead, citing security concerns about Huawei's potential access to its own network. And remember those three state-owned Chinese telcos that have been busy investing in submarine cables? The US has also labelled them national security risks, like Huawei, concerned that Beijing could use them to plant backdoors in cables and intercept data traffic. This scuppered plans for an undersea cable linking Hong Kong and California, proposed by a consortium of Facebook, China Telecom, China Unicom and others. For China, it's a race now to see how far it can expand its underwater digital Silk Road. The price? World domination of the information superhighway. The buyer of these durians is JD.com. It is one of the largest e-commerce players in China.